Okay, in part one, we went through the Model 88 Phonotrix and uh, repaired the motor and the contact that the motor had to the uh, drive mechanism for the transport of the tape. And in this second part, we're going to address the low audio problem. I don't think that you were even able to hear any of the audio on the YouTube video in part one, but it was very faint in the earbud and non-existent on the speaker. So um, we're going to pick up from that point now, having reassembled the unit, putting the audio board back in, suspecting that there might be some bad capacitors in the audio board, but I wanted to confirm a few things before I just condemned the audio board. One of the things that I discovered that wasn't obvious in part one was that when I had both the speaker and the microphone plugged in and I started the recording, I would get feedback, strong feedback, a squeal, which immediately alerted me to the fact that the audio path was clear from the microphone all the way back through to the speaker which is an indication that probably there aren't any open caps, or if they are bad, they are not bad enough to prevent feedback, strong feedback. So I was a little reluctant just to immediately condemn the capacitors, which is, as you know, a very common failure point on these vintage pieces uh, of electronics. So let's pick it up from this point, and uh, this will be a much shorter video, and we'll come to a positive conclusion okay now we probably have some bad caps on the audio board the audio is not very loud <clears throat> we're going to record here in just a second and see if we can get a decent recording but um, clearly um, the uh, audio uh, earlier when we tested the playback it was just so faint oh wait I haven't soldered that that lead in yet have I okay then the oh that's the cover for that And this, and that's the right thread because it's threading incorrectly now. So <clears throat> I'm going to be sorry that I used a hex wrench for that, but play. Okay. We won't put a screw in there just yet. This is a treble control. I looked it up on the schematic trouble and uh, base control okay play turn the volume all the way up can't hear anything No, no sound at all. all right, where to put the microphone? Let's try the mic. <clears throat> Record. Okay, testing one, two, three. Checking one, two, three. We can hear the monitoring through the through the amplifier. And uh, we've got everything on the screen here. So the uh, switch right now, we're turned up. I'm going to unplug the, amp the speaker and turn the amplifier way up, turn the recording volume way up. And let's see if we can get a decent recording now. 
on this tape. I don't want to record too much of this tape because there might be something of really of real interest on it. So we'll stop recording at this point. All right, push, play, rewind. There we go. Fingers crossed. All right, we're going to rewind that. <clears throat> and let's see if the problem is in the amplifier or in the earphone. Or, I mean, in the amplifier or in the tape deck itself. If we have a strong audio here, then we may have problems with... Yeah, it's very poor. I don't even think you can hear it. Um, I can just barely hear it. Yeah. All right, so the very, very poor audio. So that's our next video. We'll tear into that amplifier board. It's very easy to get to. And we will uh, we'll check each one of those capacitors in that circuit. I have a schematic for the tape deck so we can track down the, the, uh, the uh, capacitors that might be errant. And that'll be our part two. Okay, we're back with the Phonotrix 88. And one of the things I wanted to do for you right off the bat was to uh, prove that our amplifier um, box <clears throat> works correctly. So it has to be turned on uh, through the connection here. And then when you plug it in, so it doesn't consume the battery when it's unplugged. And so then when you hook up the tone and then connect the... All right, and that's low frequency. And here's high frequency. So I've got a tone generator hooked up to it. So that's how we test the uh, amplifier, see if it's working. So we know that the amplifier is working and uh, now we just got to get the uh, audio working on the phonotrix. You know, we, we the last video that we did, we uh, repaired the motor that was locked up full of uh, foam, corroded, I mean, uh, not corroded, but um, aged out foam, I guess you would say. So... Um, in this video, we're going to see if we can discover what is creating problems for the audio out. It did record. We did hear my voice on the recording, but the uh, uh, audio was very, very poor. So it could be a bad... Uh, could be a bad transistor. Let's get down in here on the video. Could be a bad transistor. Could be a lot of things. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do is just do some random bypass checks on the audio. Uh, excuse me, on the capacitors. And see if we can get um, some audio out of the uh, tape recorder. Um, it's a couple things that we could do. We can put the unit in record take the tape out so that we're not recording over something really important. So let's take the tape out. Do this without destroying it. There we go. <clears throat> then we're going to put it in. Uh, we'll leave all the batteries in. We will hook up the amplifier speaker. And we will hook up the microphone. And with the amplifier on 
and the microphone plugged in. Maybe we'll get a squeal. Yeah. Okay, so we know we've got a, a really good squeal there, which means that the record circuit that's giving feedback back to the back to the speaker is working. But the playback uh, of the uh, unit is not. Okay, there we go. Test, test, test. Checking one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. So we've got good amplification. There's a signal coming straight off the mic into the amplifier. So the amplifier works. We know that. And that's one of the tests that we were going to do here. Then, um, let's see. So we know we've got feedback through. We've got the microphone working, and we know we've got audio on the amplifier. So the next step is to um, see if we can get, uh, just check these capacitors one at a time by bypassing them. So um, let's take a look at the schematic and see if we can be systematic about this. All right, well, I've been pouring over these schematics and just doing signal tracing all the way along the audio path. The original test that I did with both the microphone and the speaker plugged in gave me howling feedback. And I thought, well, that should be an indication that we have a full audio loop with no trouble. And so I just confirmed that with tracing the signal all the way through the set, starting with an, a very faint signal on the record playback head and got a full sound on the amplifier speaker here. So that basically confirmed that the electronics and the amplifier board are working correctly. So the only thing left to uh, determine that there's a problem is maybe that the playback head was bad. So I got to looking more carefully. I'm going to zoom in here. And I got to looking more carefully at the the playback and erase head. This is the erase head and this is the playback record head. And I noticed that this felt, and you can see the red felt that's in there now, that this felt was completely flattened out and that especially in record and I'll go into record mode here and I want you to watch this gap right here when I would go into record this felt wasn't even touching the tape I'm bumping it there wasn't even touching the tape and the tape was not being pushed against the head the same was true with the felt on the playback record head. The tape was um, not making contact with the record head completely. So I took this bar off and pulled this assembly out. And sure enough, the felt had completely flattened out and was not thick enough to make the tape contact the head. So you recall the audio that we had, very poor audio and no volume of any real consequence. You could just barely hear it. So I want you to hear what we have now. I think I've got this hooked up correctly. Yeah, I think so. There we go. Record talking directly into the microphone the volume turned all the way up. There we go. Um, let's rewind it. Try that again. I think I've got this. This is touching the tape, so I don't want it to, to bump the tape. And I have the back of the tape recorder off. I've got to be careful what I grip here. So let's try that again.
record getting <laughs> Okay, see the difference that that makes. Now, what we've got a problem now in that this is too thick and it's pushing the, uh, it's binding the play on, on play, it's binding the tape just a little bit too. So we can release it by pulling it back just a little bit. So we've got to, We've got to get the right thickness of the uh, play and uh, the right thickness of the felt on the uh, tape head. So we'll work on that, but we're really, really, you can see the radical difference in the audio. In It's, almost, it's too loud on full volume, which is perfect. It should be just about too loud. And so it's working really well, recording and playing back now. And we'll get this all reassembled here after I make a slight adjustment on that felt. Um, there might be... I don't know. I was going to say there might be a an adjustment on how far this head pulls in when I push the play. As you can see, it's still rubbing the head right there. And uh, so it's just a little bit tight. Let me plug the amp back in. There we go. Actually, we'll just do another, we'll just do a separate recording. Um, where's the mic? Here it is. I have to unplug the speaker, or we'll get the feedback. Okay, we're plugged in on record, and we'll do a record. All right, we're recording on the Phonotrix with the little Phonotrix microphone. Let's test the uh, pause button. Put it on. We'll put it on um, pause enable. Get it in the right switch here. There we go. All right, we were recording on the Phonotrix with the Phonotrix microphone. And um, we've got the volume turned all the way up. I don't know whether that's automatic volume control. I don't believe it is because the uh, schematics uh, show that the microphone amplifier circuit in record mode, uh, the volume control right there controls the gain of the amplifier circuit. So let's rewind and see what kind of recording we have now. I think we're going to get a little bit of flutter because of the tension on that felt. All right, now we will play through the microphone um, for a real quick test, which is kind of interesting. There we go. Now, we can try one more little trick. 
and that is to tighten the motor just a little bit more and it may overcome the uh, felt tension. Let me drop the screw down in there. Oh, come on. Stuck down in there. Way down in there. somewhere oh. there we go no not quite See that felt is just a little bit too heavy on that that side right there. So we need to trim it down. So what we'll do is we'll take an exacto knife. And just shave it just a little bit. See if that made enough of a difference. Still think that's going to be too tight, but we'll try it. okay let's try it where's the mic there it is record testing one two three testing one two three testing one two three on the phono tricks 
now testing the phonotrix to see if we're getting decent audio and not getting a lot of flutter on the tape although it looks like we might be getting uh, some flutter we'll try it and see what it sounds like playback definitely solved the, all, the volume problem, didn't we? Directly, We're recording now on the Phonotrix one more time. We've adjusted the felt depth on the record heads and the erase and uh, record playback head. And hopefully we're getting a little bit better uh, tension on the felt. result of the recording and we discovered that we didn't have didn't have a uh, electronic problem we had a physical problem with the tape not contacting the tape heads now I have to be honest this is unit number 100 of uh, roughly 100, something like that. And I have, out of 100 tape recorders, I think I've only seen that happen one other time. And it wasn't quite as obvious as this. And uh, so... We run into a little bit of an unusual repair here. Uh, the motor repair was, of course, the the big challenge. But the um, there we go. Okay. Very pleased with the end result of the Phonotrix 88. Phonotrix 88. Uh, the motor repair was quite a challenge, as we saw, and we did get it um, working after some cleanup, primarily just cleaning the felt and. Uh, so that was a lot of fun and uh, not for the faint of heart I will confess I was not certain that we were gonna have a successful repair on this tape recorder and uh, so very happy with the way it ended up
Okay, we've got the uh, Phonotrix Model 88 put back together and cleaned up. The glass polished up nicely, uh, the plastic cover polished up, and the chrome and the uh, microphone, or excuse me, the amplifier is back together. And so let's uh, let's do another test recording here. And uh, I finally got smart and put a tick mark on the thing so I know where to plug them in. So let's do a recording. We'll set the volume all the way up. This is a test of the Phonotrix Model 88. Uh, pocket, well, hardly pocket size, but that's what they advertise it as, pocket sized tape recorder. And we're recording on the Phonotrix microphone. And we're going to uh, demonstrate the uh, playback quality volume level and we'll also demonstrate the tone control on the amplified speaker that comes with the phono tricks all right plug the speaker in rewind There's a volume all the way up. We're recording on the Phonotrix microphone. It's very hot. And we're going to uh, demonstrate the uh, playback quality, volume level, and we'll also demonstrate the tone control on the There's amplified speaker that comes with the Phonotrix. We're recording on the Phonotrix with the Phonotrix microphone. And, um, all right. So we've got the felt to the right gap now so we've got a nice decent recording and uh, I think we'll uh, consider this done here I, I think I showed you the uh, Phonotrix case that came with it and so we'll uh, clean this up a little bit and uh, put her all back together and thanks again for watching the vintage tech All right, if you'll pardon the mess here, I usually work on a pretty neat workbench, but I've been in and out of the shop today and um, have not had a lot of time to clean up and keep the bench clear. Got a lot of projects going on. But I wanted to illustrate the issue that that I discovered with the, the German-made Phonotrix as opposed to uh, a Japan made or an American made tape recorder and how the tape path works and the tape heads are arranged. Um, you may recall that on the this unit we had a um, very weak audio. Couldn't figure out why so we checked the amplifier out and eventually determined that there was nothing wrong with the electronics. But what we discovered was that the heads, so let me see if I can describe this the heads are here. There's one here and one here. And the tape comes around and the heads, the, the, the record side of the tape is facing this direction. And so the tape is pulled away from the heads as it's transported through the machine. The tape does not touch the heads when this mechanism is not pressed in. Whereas um, on a regular or on a, on a standard Japanese model, the tape heads are on the same side as the tape. See, there's the tape head. And here's the record side is back here, not here. And so the tape pulls, as the tape is transported, the tape is pressed into the head automatically even though there is a pad right there you can see the pad the pad gently pushes and you can see it bumping there and it gently pushes in on the tape but even without that you'll still get audio and I can push it away see I pushed it completely away and we still have audio it's because the tape is still being pulled against the tape head 
Well, that's not true with the Phonotrix tape recorders. The Phonotrix tape recorders, they uh, they pull the tape, reverse the uh, direction of the tape, and uh, pull the tape against the felt pads. So if the felt pads are low, the tape will never come in contact with the heads. And that's exactly what happened here. And so once we got the tape, the, I replaced the little felt pads with this little white felt pad uh, with this little red felt and got the level just right so that it doesn't crush the tape into the head and bind the tape transport. So we got the right distance set now and it's working beautifully. But that's an unusual thing you don't see on these tape decks because of the way that the the heads are oriented on um, these tape decks here these heads would be up here and the tape would be flipped around i hope that makes sense but in any case that's a, a unique problem that i've run into with the german made tape recorders um, i don't know if all the german tape recorders were made that way but that is definitely a phono tricks um tape deck um issue and uh so there we have it Thanks again for watching the Vintage Tech. Okay. <laughs> well, I told you it wasn't an electronic problem, and, and uh, we were able to arrive at that conclusion with this repair. And I don't, I don't remember how long this repair turned out to be, this, this second part, but um, I hope that was entertaining to you. I had a lot of fun working on that Phonotrix 88 and that's been a cute little tape recorder to play with uh, occasionally. So now I've got the set, the large one, the duck, and then the the pocket-sized, quote, um, Phonotrix 88. Um, there may be other Phonotrix tape recorders available out there. I stumbled on this one on eBay. But um, anyway, I'd appreciate any comments you have, any advice you have. Uh, some of you are very good about offering suggestions and advice about the way you might do a repair or the uh, the logic that you may have followed but um, I was glad that I discovered I didn't have to replace a bunch of caps on this on this tape deck and uh, we discovered that it was just a mechanical problem so once again as I've already said at least twice thanks again for watching vintage tech <laughs>